We're broadcasting live from the Eagle's Nest in Spring Hill, Florida for this key late season matchup between the Knights of Vanguard and the Eagles of Springstead. Thank you for joining us here tonight on the Gulf Coast Sports Network. I'm Derek Smith and I'll be bringing you the call for tonight's game. And by my side is the football guru himself, Dave Barrett. Dave, tell us a little bit about the matchup here tonight. Thank you, Derek. And again, thank you to all the fans for joining us for another great matchup here on the Golf Sports, on the Gulf Coast Sports Network. It's been an incredible season with a lot of great games, and we expect to have another one here tonight. Let's start with the visiting Vanguard Knights. Coach Ed Farmer has his team clicking on all cylinders as they come in tonight ranked number 12 in Florida 6A with an undefeated record of 8-0 and they're winning their games by an average margin of 21 points per game but most importantly it's their defense that have given up less than 6 points per game and have your eye on sophomore quarterback Fred Gaskins and senior running back DeWitt Betterson as the Knights will try to get on the board early. The Springstead Eagle is it is not only senior night but it's also going to be the last game of the season for Coach Garifano is going to have a lot of energy and a lot of emotion for the Eagles sideline tonight and he's going to depend on that from his senior to lay it on the line and get a critical win. Coach Garifano will need his trio of senior offensive leaders, Santola, Andrus, and Crosslick, to have big games tonight and for the Eagles to swarm to the ball on defense. That's right, Dave. We have another great matchup here tonight. Let's take it down to field commentator Brian Lott for a quick report. Brian, what's going on down there on the field? Hey, Derek. Thanks for uh, checking in with me. Hey, uh, this is I'm Brian Lott here from Gulf Coast Sports Network, and uh, we are here live on the field here at Springstead uh, getting ready for a pretty big matchup this tonight. Uh, Springstead come in 6-3, uh, and three, and uh, they're looking to try to get a, make a good playoff push, and uh, they're going to be playing uh, the Vanguard Knights, which actually are uh, undefeated, and they're trying to hold that uh, undefeated record through the season. Uh, you know, Derek, there's going to be a thing that's uh, – I think the big key to this game is going to be um, uh, who can hold on to the football the longest. Uh, we've had some rain come through in the last day or two. I've uh, had some rain here as of late this afternoon. Uh, field is a little damp. Uh, they're expecting some potential uh, rainfall coming this evening. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm excited and looking forward to um, a big matchup here uh, against two good powerhouse teams. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, back to you, uh, Derek. Yeah, since you brought up field conditions, Dave and I were thinking about that up here. I mean, we can see some spots on the field where it's a, a – you can see that this is towards the end of the season and the field's taken a beating. What's it like down there? We have had a fair amount of rain. Yeah, um, I noticed just a few minutes ago the referees and uh, gang has been kind of pass, been passing by and uh, they're having to fix a couple of, uh, couple of holes in the – in the field, uh, but other than that, uh, I think it's a, a turf is ready to be played on, and uh, looking forward to a, a good game here. Yeah, so are we. Thanks, Brian. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back after this. For the past five years, I haven't ran uh, because I just believed that my body was on the decline, that the pain that I was experiencing uh, was not uh, tolerable enough for me to go out and run and. It's one of the main reasons why I retired from the NFL, wanting to be able to run and play with my kids. And the day that he adjusted me, I felt that relief and I felt like I could actually put on my cleats again. My name is Tom Roselli. I served in the U.S. Navy, 65 to 69. Through all the turmoil and stress battling with the VA, I've come to learn that certain organizations have their hands tied and can only proceed so far. Whereas Attorney Chris Chambers uh, has the experience and the ability to dig into the files and uh, get the results that got me my 100%. Tremendous job in helping veterans. 
for the past five years. I was fortunate enough to be able to work with Divinity on a custom skincare regimen the year leading up to my wedding. It included a series of in-office treatments, microneedling, PRP, hydrofacials, and an at-home skincare regimen. So I had no worries the day of my wedding. My skin was perfect. Preparing for that next step in life isn't always easy. At Legacy Wealth Partners, our combination of experience, professionalism, and access to a wide variety of products and services to help meet all of your financial goals. For a new level of attention, insight, and capability, contact the trusted team at Legacy Wealth Partners. Welcome back, sports fans. Alongside Dave Barrett, I'm Derek Smith. Here to bring you tonight's game, Springstead Eagles against the Vanguard Knights. So, Dave, we had a chance to kind of watch both teams warm up. Uh, you know, what, kind of what are your initial impressions on what kind of game you think we're going to see out here? Well, I can tell you that the Vanguard team looks like they like to throw. They look like they like to run. Uh, they have some speed on their side. And I know Springstead is accustomed to running the ball three, four yards at a time, keep the other team's offense off the field, maintain time of possession. And if that works in their favor tonight, we could have a Springstead Eagle win. Yeah, anything's possible, especially with how much rain we've had. That ball is presumably going to be slippery. We just had a storm come through here hour and a half before yeah, kickoff, yeah. right? So, you know, our field reporter, Brian Lott down there, did give us a, a favorable report about the field conditions. I'm sure it's in great shape. This is Florida. This school's been here forever. They know how to manage this. But, you know, especially with the rain we just got, uh, you know, see if that plays a factor, um, you know. But, you know, this Vanguard team, they're they are not 8-0 for, for, uh, by mistake. They look like know. the real deal. They most certainly do. So Springstead's going to have their hands full tonight, but I think if it's not out of the question, they could pull an upset. I mean, we've seen them play plenty of games this season. They are a legitimate team themselves, and... You know, hold your head high, stick to your game, play good defense, and, you know, mess around and see what happens. Yeah, they they love their defense. They have a lot of pride in their defense, and and they, they do move the ball three, four yards at a time. Uh, this will be a very talented offense that they have to try to compete with, and, and uh, I, I understand Vanguard's defense is even tougher, so... Yeah, There's going to be some challenges tonight. Yeah, no question. Um, I was looking up their just overall stats this year. I was interested to see how what how it is they're doing, and it seems they're doing it on both sides of the ball, really. You know, for the season, 8-0, they've given up 46 points. Yeah. Wow. It, it, eight games into That's a season. That's less than a touchdown per game. You're right, right. So, you know, they're doing something right on defense. On offense, they're, they put up 210 points. Yeah. So they're scoring plenty of points. They're keeping the other team off the scoreboard. I mean, when you when you boil it down, that's how you win. Well, and it looks like they have about 100 athletes over there on yeah, their sideline. Yeah, it line. really does. 
it really does. They were, you know, taking warm ups. The the kicker was able to easily hit anywhere he put the ball. Um, you know, Springstead has a talented kicker though too. I mean, Andrus has you know quite a leg on him. So, you know, it, it, it this is going to be an exciting game. I'm, I'm excited to see yeah. what's going to happen here. Yeah, because Springstead's record is pretty solid as well. Uh, it'll be interesting. You got 11 on 11. So, even though Vanguard has a few extra players, Springstead will have to contend with 11 at a time. And senior night here for Springstead, so emotions already high. You know. A, a lot of festivities yeah, before game. Yeah, right, right. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. You know there's going to be a lot of fun. And Coach Arapano has them, has them ready to go every week. So, you know they've got a plan. You know they're going to execute it. Um, it just matters how well the other team counters. Well, and those seniors, this is potentially their last home game ever. Right. So they've been playing on this for four years. So there's some emotion, like you said. So you always want to go out with a bang. Right. So hopefully these seniors step up and play out. And we have a ball game. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to, for sure. Well, I want to thank our team out here. Um, we're getting ready to wrap up our season. I believe we only have one more broadcast left. Um, hard to believe. It feels like we just kind of got started here. But... You know, I would like to thank everybody from our um, sideline reporter, Brian Lott, um, our main camera operator, Bill Leiser, um, of course, our broadcast engineer, Will Wilkie. Thank you for all you do. It, without your hard work, it would not look and sound as smooth as it does. And, you know, all, all the broadcasters, Dave, Abe, uh, Brian Hawkins, everybody who's, who's taken part in this, um, you know, I want to thank you, and especially the fans. If you haven't liked and subscribed by now, I mean, really, oh, yeah, what, are you do what are you doing? <laughs> really? Um, you know, subscribe to us. Give us a like. We appreciate it. Um, we appreciate you checking us out. Um, if you have any comments, let us know. Um, if you like what we're doing here, let us know. If you think that there's some things we could improve on, kindly let <laughs> us know. Um, but really, truly, thank you, everybody who's involved in this. Um, it's fun for me. I know it's fun for everybody it's, here. It's good night. So, you know, we got the coin flip getting ready to happen here. Let's see how this game's going to start, Dave. Absolutely. Looks like they're bringing the rest of the seniors to the, to the numbers. Quick little ovation by the packed yeah. crowd tonight. Yeah, yeah. Nice big crowd here, too. You never know with the rain here in Florida what kind of crowd you're going to get, but they braved it. They came out. It's going to be a nice night, I think. Kind I of think overall it's going to be a perfect night for some football. Late October usually is. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's see. Springs is going to defer. Seems to be the trend. All right, we're going to defer that kickoff and give yourself a chance in the second half. We're going to see that sophomore-led quarterback yes. and his offense take the field here shortly after the kickoff. Yeah, Fred Gaskin, sophomore quarterback for Vanguard, having a great season. Great season. Right on time with the kickoff. Right in here, living room. Right set eagle. Here they come. They'll be kicking off. They are an excited bunch, to say the least. Wow, the band's getting into it. The crowd's getting into it. The cheerleaders are getting into it. Now the football players are are ready to go. And please welcome. Yeah, Tonight band. A little little motivational yeah. horn honk from yeah, the get, entire brass section there. We we appreciated that. Way to go. Well, 
Last time I saw Owen kicking off, he kicked a couple in the end zone. So I'm sure that's what they're going to want to do because the speedy returners for Vanguard are back deep or will be back deep here shortly. Yeah, you would have to imagine. That's going to be the game plan, at least on the opening kickoff. Send it back deep, start them at the 20. You know what kind of defense you want to run from there. So number four, Owen Andres, get the ball. Boot to leather, as they say. Got number six and number one deep. Number one, Elijah Hopkins, and number six, Josh Rembert, back deep for Vanguard. Everybody lined up. Here we go. We are underway, folks. Little pooch kick, actually. Number 11 under it. Malik Monaco. Maconico. Smart play with the uh, fair catch. Give your offense a chance to do what they want. I'm going to go to a quick commercial break nope. before. Oh. Sorry, good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's take a look at this Vanguard offense. A sophomore quarterback. Number four, Fred Gasket behind center. Number nine, DeWitt Betterson next to him in the backfield. Toss. Uh -oh. Number one, great tackle there. Open field tackle number five of Springstead. M my man Madden. My man Madden. We're going to call his name a couple times, I would imagine. That was Elijah Hopkins on the carry. You know, Madden looked sealed at the beginning, but he fought off, got, got his outside arm free, and made that tackle. Short gain. We got three receivers up high for Vanguard. Betterson moves to the right side of the quarterback. Quick toss. Again, out to Hopkins. A couple of good blocks out in front of him. Had a yeah, first just, down there. That was just a simple screen. And, you know, he, he showed the wheels. Turned around and got outside, and a first down. Yeah, good blocks out there, too, by his wide receiver. oh, receivers. I do see a penalty flag on the on the field. Oh, we've got a hold, I bet. Holding is almost too good of a block, it seems. <laughs> he must have had his hands on the outside of the, the wide receiver there. All right, so that put up no first down. Bring up second down and it's like 12. Couple hard counts there. Tosses it out wide, overthrows his receiver, number six, Josh Rembert. He kind of dropped that ball in between six and, and one. Not sure if it was six for sure or just underthrown, yeah. but. We got third. Big defensive stand yeah, big here. Big defensive stand here Ooh. for sure, Dave. So Gaskin behind center. Two receivers high, one low. Looking out. Catch. Short. And looks like they're going to be short. That was Elijah Hopkins again. Seems to be his favorite target there. Big wide receiver, senior, 5'11", 175 pounds. So fourth and short here at the 44-yard line, trying to get just one yard here. There's a run kind of to the right of center. Betterson enough for the first down. He got about six on that, it looked like, Dave. It's a 5'11", 180-pound senior running back. First time he's touched the ball for them today. Yeah, we got to see his first step burst. 
which was plentiful for that down. So fresh set of downs here for Vanguard, right about the 50 yard line. Swings oh. it out wide, number 16, Jamal Watkins. Number 10, come across that line and swatted the ball, just missing just missed the it deflection. Too. Madden's been blitzing off the side. Yeah, at least he's showing it. Oh. Oh, almost knocked down, but it is complete. Number three down the sidelines, still on his balance. feet, stays up into the end zone. Touchdown, Tyrell Randall on the pass from Gaskin. There is a flag on the play. Flag way back. 44 like yard line, offense. 46, 47 yard line. So if that ends up going against Vanguard. It's going to take some points off the board. Madden almost had that too, didn't he? In the backfield, it was like the same play from the from the from the previous. Right. Where it was number 10 that almost had it. This time, my man Magnus almost had it. But they are going to take the points off. Yep. They are going to back him up, and Springstead's going to get another chance. So just the other side of half now, or on their side of the half, second down, 14. Handoff. To Betterson. <laughs> It seems like Vanguard is definitely trying to set up the pass first. Yes. I've gone to the air probably two to one. So we got three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Betterson in the backfield to the left of Gaskin. Does look right, complete number 16. Puts his head down almost enough for the first down. That's Jamil Watkins again. That's his second reception of the game. Yeah, I believe they're gonna mark him just short. Yeah, another fourth down. One back, hands off to him. That's Betterson again. So it looks like they're trying to throw on first, second, third, and run on fourth. He is able to move the chains. So fresh set of downs here. They're at the 39 yard line moving into Springstead territory. And. Oh. It was a court QB sneak, but it is flushed out by yeah. number 33, Yadiel Vasquez. So, he, good job there. He flew up, made that tackle, made a nice hit. Yeah. Yeah, and then the rest of the defense was right there to pile on, make sure he didn't get any more. So, that's the first time we've seen Gaskin try to run. Yeah. And he's a big guy. He he's can a big see guy. by his legs, tall kid. I want power! Hey! Hands off. Betterson again. To the left side. Gets four or five yards on it. So they're switching it up this time. They're run, run. Yeah, they they flip-flopped on us. So third down here. Some confusion on this side. He's scrambling around in the backfield, trying to find somewhere to go. They got him wrapped up. He does not have enough for a first down. So another fourth down here, Dave. Well played by by number two, Roman Strat. He he made sure that quarterback 
did not go inside or yeah, outside. He, kept, he mirrored kept him the whole time. On him. Absolutely. And good coverage downfield because he had nowhere to go, and his eyes were down there trying to make a play, too. This is the longest fourth down conversion they're looking at. Drops back. Gaskin, Ooh, and sack. he is sacked and down. That great defense coming in off Looked the like edge. Looked like that was number 15. Aiden Ferguson. Ferguson came in hot, finished what he started, and gives the ball back to his offense. Great so, job by the Eagles defense. Yeah, great job by the Eagles defense deciding to defer, putting their defense on the field first. They come up with a big stop here. Let's see if they can move the ball, what kind of offense they can produce against this Vanguard defense, who by the numbers seems to be pretty stout. Yeah, I'm excited to see this defense and uh, and how Springstead offensive game plan shows off. Number ten, Santola. Ooh, there hands go. off. There you go. Number eleven. Mm -hmm. Good run, number eleven, Derek Chirella. Vanguard's in a base 4-4 defense, and and a tackle on Springstead made their down block. It gave him some room, and he did what he was supposed to do. Great first down play. Yeah, great first down play. Got good positive yards. Brings up second and four, three or four here. So Centola behind center. Two backs behind him, one re receiver to his right. Hands off, fullback, and nowhere to go. Stuffed right at the line. That's our senior spotlight tonight, Mr. Owen Andrus. And uh, he, was, he was met by four defenders. Did a good job holding on to the ball. Big third down. Big third down here. See if they can convert. So Andrus in the backfield behind Centola. Everybody kind of bunched in tight. Fakes the handoff, rolls right, throws it away. Nothing going for anybody. They, they were covered. They were covered on that. So smart decision to throw it away. Yeah, instead of four something, turn it over. Yeah, the secondaries. For Vanguard, have uh, that number six Pow has three interceptions on the season, and number two Sanchez has four. So smart decision to smart throw it decision. away. Decision. Don't force anything deep. Bring the punt team on. Kind of turn it into a field position game, at least in this first quarter. He punts away, and it is. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Where they cannot return it. Well done. Cadell Gilbert, number 88, on the punt. And Vanguard had Elijah Hopkins, their wide receiver, back yeah. to... Hopkins has a lot of speed, a lot of really shape. Really physical, too, over yeah. on the sideline there, fighting to get a first down. A hard-nosed player. Springstead was smart to kick it out of bounds. Don't give that guy a chance to return it. Let's go ahead and take a commercial. We'll be right back. Navy SEAL veteran and endurance athlete Don Mann pushed his body to the limit and tried regenerative medicine when all other options failed. It's unbelievable. I just assumed I was going to be in pain forever. And I've been in pain since the 80s. Now I'm running and riding a bicycle faster than I have in seven years. Even my vision is better. I'm 100% pain-free right now, and I don't take any medications. Call Aligned Integrative Medicine for exam and x-rays to see if you qualify for regenerative treatment. Welcome back, sports fans. Alongside Dave Barrett, I'm Derek Smith here to bring the coverage. We have 5.56 left in the first quarter. 
Uh, each offense has had the ball once. Uh, Vanguard turned over on downs, and Springstead just punted. Uh, Vanguard getting it again. First play here, handoff number five. Good move, good speed, really good game there. That was Betterson. Yeah, that was Betterson. I said five. There's no five on my sheet, yeah. so it was yeah, hard was to find. Betterson. Yeah, that was Betterson there. <clears throat> he, he did a great run. job running that with his eyes. He started right, broke it back left, had some numbers. So Gaskin behind center, hands off again, up the middle, physical run, just head down. Betterson just getting another first down, two touches, two first downs. We'll see it. Springs will have to get right back to to where they were on their first drive. Yeah, playing. If they want to keep this guy out of the end zone. Throws it out wide, number six. Makes a move, shows some speed into the end zone. Joshua Rembert. Wow. There was little room between that that young man and the sideline, and he still no, snuck no. in there. Quickly. He showed off some speed there, didn't he? Six nothing is your score. That was a quick touchdown by Vanguard. So, on for the extra point, number 17, Wilcox, and he does not make no it. Plenty of leg. Is, he um, this is good. he kind of kind of just came around it, hooked it a little bit, <clears throat> not able to get it between the uprights. So six nothing, five twenty left in the first quarter. Let's take a look at the Legacy Wealth Partners regional scoreboard. Welcome back, sports fans. Vanguard kicking off after that four-play touchdown drive. Back deep for Springstead. Hard to see the numbers. We have number three, Cross Lick, back. I believe it's number 11. Derek. Derek Chirella. Kick is away. It's a shortmark. Oh, nice. Fielded by 11. And taken down about the 23 yard line. Chirella, good return. Yeah, it took a, a wild Chirella. bounce there at the end. Seemed like that was by design, to be honest with you. It's a hard, hard ball to handle. Struck well. Bouncing off the ground. Nobody knows where it's going to go. So second time with this Eagle offense on the field. Vanguard had a good showing their second time on offense. Let's see if Springstead can match that. Santola behind center. Around the edge. Good run there. About three yards. Number three, cross lit. Well, if you look at the Vanguard's defense, they had a lot of guys inside that two, three yard uh, line of scrimmage. And getting outside was, was the plan there on that play. Again, Springstead. Brings him in bunched. Like you have Andrus and Lick behind Centola. 
everybody in, looking to the sideline, get a play call in here, and timeout's called. You see what happened there was the offense got set, the defense was set, and then they looked for the coach for the play, and while they did that, the defense switched formations, and Springstead had to burn a timeout. A little gamesmanship there. But we've seen we've seen a lot of teams do that, get into formation and then check check with me for the play. And when the defense changes from that second uh last you don't have last enough seconds, time to call a different play here. The play called may not be the best play. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So getting back to action here. Game plan in place for Springstead. Vanguard coming out for a little talk. Let's see what they've got to counter. We got 88 Gilbert out way wide for Springstead. Everybody else in close. Man in motion. Chirella ends up two wide receivers to the right of Centola. Hands off up the middle. Good gain, about four or five there. By Andrus, as Dave mentioned. Make sure you stick with us at halftime as we'll have our senior spotlight segment featuring Owen Andrus, as well as highlights and insights and the Legacy Wealth Partners regional scoreboard. So third down. About six. One in the back. Oh, there he Goes is. Goes out wide. Ooh, good, good catch. catch. <laughs> Number three, cross lick. Good fingertip. Yeah. Snag there. So this will bring up fourth down. And here comes the punt team out again. Not able to get much going on that drive where the Eagles. It was a good effort by Cross to get, jump up there, catch the ball. I look forward to this punt to be punted out of bounds, this sideline. Ooh. And it is just the other side of the 50. Hopkins back trying to receive it for Vanguard. He's hoping he gets an opportunity. Yeah, he did. He rushed over to the sidelines, tried to get his hands on it. You imagine Vanguard's going to try and get get the ball in his hands in some way this drive. Uh, he was out of the fun. They almost scored too fast for him to get involved last drive. Well, good starting position for Vanguard right here at the 50 right at midfield. Number four, the sophomore, Gaskin, behind center. He's made some nice passes so far, Dave. Yeah, he's done a well a nice job. Number 22, Javarian Salter checks in. Gaskin steps back, throws it out wide. Too tall for Randall. Number three out there. Looked like he was he, running a different route than Gaskin was throwing to. He he kind of cut the the end of the route inside in front of the the cornerback. Had he kept rolling where the quarterback threw it, it would have been a jump ball. And with his size, yeah, absolutely. But plenty plenty of arm to get it out there. That was a long throw, too, from this hash all the way out to the other sideline. Second down, throws it out wide again. Number three catches it, makes a move, stays on his feet, and finally brought down. That was Randall there. That's where the flat, the, the, the ground conditions That's right. come to play. That's right. You can see where we've run some plays already. Some divots coming out of the field. Brings up third down and maybe a yard, yard and a half. Third down. 
<coughs> Hands off, 22. Really good run. Great speed through that hole. That's Javarian Salter again. He's just a sophomore running the ball with that kind of explosion, that kind of power. Strong finish, first carry. Br brings his team over with the first down. Looks like we have a eagle down. <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after this. For the past five years, I haven't ran uh, because I just believed that my body was on the decline, that the pain that I was experiencing uh, was not uh, tolerable enough for me to go out and run. And it's one of the main reasons why I retired from the NFL, wanting to be able to run and play with my kids. And the day that he adjusted me, I felt that relief and I felt like I could actually put on my cleats again. Welcome back sports fans. After that uh, official timeout, we went ahead and took one as well. We appreciate you being with us. Six nothing's the score, 216 left in the first quarter. First and 10, Vanguard on the move. Hands off, 22, Salter. Couple of nice moves. Gets another first down. Right around the 15 yard line. Nice holes to run through. Really explosive speed by the sophomore. Hands off again. Salter up the middle. Really physical run. Gets hit, keeps going. Yards after contact are impressive on this drive. Yeah, several several Eagle defensive players had it shot at him, but it took a team to bring him down. It's a 5'9", 156-pound sophomore. Runs bigger than that, though. Yeah, he sure does. Those legs move and don't stop. We've got three receivers left, one right. Quarterback draw by Gaskin. Not enough for the first down. It'll bring up third. I apologize. It is enough for a first down. First and goal here from the five. 105 left in the quarter. Three receivers again to the left, one to the right. Salter to the left, the quarterback, and flags flying like yeah. crazy, Dave. Yeah, they're going to back him up five yards. Look like the offensive lineman flinched a bit. Make this first and goal a little more challenging. First and goal from the 10. So it looks like they'll get back in that same formation. They This is about the formation they run most of their plays out of too. Yeah. Three to the left, one to the right, one back behind Gaskin. Does hand off to him, Salter, but wow. he is taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that was great effort by the by the defense. Two people got in there. Yeah, they, they weren't going to get tricked on that play again. They were oh, in they that got a couple a of guy, times for big, big yards. Big entering the game. There's a different formation. They're all bunched in. One receiver up high. Hands off. Number nine, oh, Betterson. The big and fullback. That'll bring, it, trying to bring us to the end of the first quarter. So, third and goal. When we come back here, after we switch sides. So we'll take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back after this. Preparing for that next step in life isn't always easy. At Legacy Wealth Partners, our combination of experience, professionalism, and access 
to a wide variety of products and services to help meet all of your financial goals. For a new level of attention, insight, and capability, contact the trusted team at Legacy Wealth Partners. Welcome back, sports fans. Third and goal from about the four here. Vanguard deep into Eagle territory. Eagles trying to make another stand on defense. As Vanguard has them all bunched in. One receiver to the left. Gaskin going back. Rolls to that side. Looking for something. Flag out. And incomplete pass. But there was a flag thrown in the end zone, Dave. We'll have to check with the referee and see what it is. Holding again. Holding by Vanguard is the call. It'll push him back another five. It'll make it third and... Third and goal from the nine, maybe. Yeah, they're in that double tight set. They brought their defensive tackle, DeJuan McBride, in to play fullback, trying to get some tough short yards. And let's go there and stay in that formation. And they show that they don't mind throwing. On the 20. One receiver up high for Gaskin. 51 and lays a block as a fullback. Another one. Gaskin on the run. Looks like he's going to get tackled. Mm. And there they are. Right at the line of scrimmage. Looks like 34 and 51. Craig well, Krober and Martez a... Archibald on the tackle. They got there. Got Vanguard them out of the end zone. Kicker. Brings up fourth down. Vanguard has that kicker. Even though he missed the, the PAT, he has the leg, so they're going to give it a shot. He's... Vanguard sets up for a field goal attempt. 28, 27-yard line. Kicks it. Plenty of leg, and he makes it. Bangs it through. He could have added 20 yards to that and probably been just fine. Well... Springstead had Vanguard. Vanguard had the ball on Springstead's five yard line to go in or inside the five they pushed him back through penalties and Vanguard had to settle for the three points so nine nothings to score 10 41 left in the second quarter the Eagles are coming to play their defense is doing some defense is coming to play if they can get some tempo on offense uh, move the ball move the chains keep Vanguard in their own end. Um, their defense is doing a great job um, bending but not breaking. Uh, getting the tackles, gang tackling, breeding plays. Uh, the moment's not too big for them here. They came to play, for sure. Yeah, Vanguard's defense has played pretty stout. Uh, but I'm excited to see what Coach Garifano has on this drive. I'm sure they're going to try to eat some clock, rest their defense. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. Go ahead and talk us a like and hit subscribe. We appreciate your viewership and support. So Vanguard spreading out for the kickoff. Ball kicked deep and into the end zone for a touchback, but not by much, Dave. It looked like he was trying to stop that ball right before the goal line, and he didn't miss by much. Yeah, he didn't miss by much. Smart play by the Eagles to let it go into the end zone, get the ball in the 20. And it looks like it's raining again a little bit. At least it just was. 
so moisture is still rolling through here. I think the forecast has some more rain coming. There you go. A couple of yards past the line of scrimmage met by a bevy of knights. Well, that's the play that the Eagles have used to move the ball and get some positive yards, and it's just one guy away. So second and 10, 10-12 ten, left in this first half. Number 10, Centola behind center. Two receivers to his right. Three receivers to his right, one in the slot. Hands off. Oh, takes it himself. Good gain there, about six, seven yards. Misdirection. I, I lost sight of the ball there for a minute, so really good way to sell it. Yeah, those play fakes are gonna gonna help. The deception will help. You know, Vanguard has everyone inside five yards of the football except for their safety, who's nine, nine and a half. They are committing to stopping the run. So if you get past level one, there's an opportunity for a foot race. Yeah, there's no anticipation on Vanguard's side that they're going to try to go over the top they on them. They have seven guys coming right now. Handoff up the middle, swallowed up. There's nothing going there. He, he might have got the first. Yeah, they're signaling the first. Another hard run I'm by the fullback. He got enough to keep that those chains moving. Down. Oh, and that was our... Senior Spotlight interview, Owen Andrus on the carry. Enough for the first down. So two receivers to the left. Santola back, hands off. Nothing going again. Like that was number 19, Jalen Williams, on the tackle for Vanguard. First one there. 6'4", 250-pound defensive end. Checking the sidelines to get the play. Second and 10 from the 30. Centola making sure everybody's set. Hands off around and swallowed up again. Yeah, that looked like the fullback who's yeah. back to defensive tackle. Right. Dion McBride making uh, contributions on both sides of the ball. Yeah, that was cross licked on the carry. Third and 10 for the Eagles. Looked in motion. It go. Fakes it. Throws deep. Oh. Intercepted. Number seven. Got is, is I, Isaiah Guy. And great blocks out in front. And there's a flag thrown. So tried to go deep. Did Centola just unable to get it out of the reach of Isaiah. The 6'2", 189 pound, listed as an athlete playing defensive back currently. Yeah. Um, he, got that ball in his hand and was looking for the end zone. Really good return showed, on that pick too. They, he most definitely showed why they call him an athlete. He, he had decent coverage, but a good you know, a good ball was there. The receiver had an opportunity, but, you know, number seven just got undercut, jumped high. He got yeah, really he high cut. sky. But it looks like there was another penalty on Vanguard. 
So Vanguard with the ball. The 21 first down Vanguard. Gaskin behind center. Hands off to number nine and he's gonna make his way into the end zone. Betterson again. It was a 21 yard run there. See if they can convert this extra point. 15 to nothing's your score. 708 left in the first quarter. First half, I mean. Wilcox on for the Knights. Try and bang it through. And that one is true. Gets that one. So after the extra point, 16 nothing is the score. We're going to check out the Legacy Wealth Partners regional scoreboard. Back sports fans, 16 nothing, 708 left in the second quarter alongside Dave Barrett. I'm Derek Smith bringing you the game tonight. Vanguard Knights here at Springstead as that kick sails into the end zone for a touchback. After the 21 yard run by Betterson. Vanguard's so far pitching a shutout here, and their defense came in with a good plan, didn't they, Dave? Yeah, they Against sure did. This, this Eagle offense, they kind of knew how they wanted to play it and have made a concerted effort to limit their options. Yeah, they they have everyone up tight saying, beat me with the pass, and, and Spring said had an opportunity, and some of these athletes just making plays. But they get another shot at it. See what happens here on this drive. So from the 20 yard line, seven minutes left here in the first quarter. Toss in the backfield. <laughs> and it looks like that was hard to see. That's a really far away from where we are here. It was a tackle for loss for the, for the Eagle yeah, for, for Vanguard. I saw Owen Andrus limp off uh, the last series, grabbing his elbow. Hopefully he's okay, but yeah, he's back in there. Yeah, Andrus there behind Centola. And it looks like Lick is over in the almost tight end spot. Two receivers to the left. Hands off to Andrus up the middle, and he is met at the line of scrimmage. Oh, and Andrews takes the hand off the line of scrimmage. Tackle for no gain, brings up third down. So it brings up third down and 14, maybe? Yeah. Oh, we do have a water break here. So, what are your thoughts initially here? About five or so minutes left in the. In the first half, Dave. Well, Vanguard has shown their speed on offense and defense, which makes it very tough to to score and easy to score if if you're Vanguard. 
the Eagles have marched. Uh, they've had opportunity. They've cashed in on some penalties, and they're going to have to keep doing that if they're going to want to get off the, the zero there. Yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. I mean, for, for Springstead, I, they were able to run some misdirection plays kind of use the aggressiveness of Vanguard to their advantage, uh, get them going one way and come back the other. If they can maybe implement some more plays like that into their offense at half, it might help to free some other things up that they like to do that they know they can have success with. Um, no easy task, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah, much easier said than done. I'm, I'm quite aware. There's, there's a reason I'm up here talking, yeah. in, talking to you people instead of trying to motivate young men to, to play football. So... I understand for sure. Throws it out wide. Met initially. The pass is complete though to Lick. And tackled right away by Isaiah Guy. That's that's the, that's the he had the interception. Interception and return. Quick tackle. So he read that play right away. Those are two good catches though this game already by Lick. Um, not easy passes to catch. That one as well uh, turned around found it got it into his hands turned up field quickly he just happened to be met right away so here they are to punt deep in their own end end over end kick over his head takes a springstead bounce it is fielded by hopkins and he's on the return about the 45 yard line and oh looks like a questionable block there but he did get through there's a flag from yeah. the other side of the field come in he is finally brought down at the 35 yard line so good return by hopkins once he finally got it but it did look like a questionable block there on the other side of the field and and they got it they yeah. got it so flag came in from the other side and Looks like it's going to be an illegal hit. Yeah. So hit that'll bring back. that return back a little bit. Probably end up somewhere around midfield. A little further back, maybe about the Vanguard 35 or so. Yeah, Hopkins was pretty surprised that they, they didn't get it out of bounds. And I, I, I bet the punter tried to get it out of bounds. It was a good end over end kick. It was perfect. And perfect. he took an eagle bounce all the way back to about the 30 and he was and able to start his return. It's worked out for Springstead. You, yeah. You went from your sideline to their 35. So playing a field position game, that's that's a win on your side there for sure. Make them work for these yards. Holding, holding ends up being the official call, um, not an illegal hit. So here comes Gaskin and the Knights again. Oh, this is not Gaskin in anymore. That was from number 12, Ronnie Gilchrist, the senior 6'3", 190-pound senior quarterback coming in. And he's been in a, f a few times. He's got 365 yards on the season through the air. And that pass was complete to number three, Tywell Randall. Back throws again to Randall, trying to make a play. Some blockers out in front. It looks like he does have enough for the first down, too, as he's brought down just to the other side of the 45. So Gilchrist coming in, hitting Randall with two, two quick passes. Two quick passes results in a first down. So first and ten from the 45. Fakes a handoff, swings it far side, and a flag is down. That pass is complete to 26. Tejawan Leslie Farmer. Looks like it's going to be on Vanguard again. You know, if there's one thing they are going to clean up at halftime, it has been some of these penalties that we've seen. I mean, they they shot themselves in foot, an opportunity for a touchdown down here, had to resort for a field goal as a result, and great return, got pushed back, and now here and again the putting fourth, themselves first in a down hole. down they've lost as well. After the penalty, first down and 12. 
first but and the, the Eagles 12. will take them, won't they? Got to take those penalties and make them count. Under four minutes to go in the half. Eagles want to keep him out of the end zone. And there's a QB draw right ball, up the middle. Ball, ball loose. Turnover. Springstead does have it. The opportune opportunity. Is that was a good right run. Right in his hands. That's 18. That was a good run by Gilcrest. Um, ball out of the hands. It was picked up by number 18, Tucker Watkins. And Watson. Tucker, Tucker was the injured player in the first quarter. Yeah. Walked it off, came back, got a fumble recovery. Big play. Big play there. So, Springstead ball. You um, know, that's the best thing about football. They were just trying to keep them out of the end zone before the half. Now, they got the ball, 347. Can we get in the end zone? Can we get on the board? Can we go into halftime with some motivation? Yeah, some momentum. See. See if you can pull that momentum to your sideline here. So, two backs behind Centola, Andrus, and Lick. One receiver to the left. There's a snap. Nice. Inside, number four, Andrus on the carry. About three yards. Which is what Springstead wants to do. Three yards at a time. Marches the ball to the end zone. <coughs> 320 and ticking. 16 nothing is the score. Springstead trying to get on the board before halftime. Hands off inside. Nothing going there. That was Andrus again on the carry. It's like Hopkins on the tackle, number one. Twenty one, Tyreek Hickson. My apologies. You get these guys turning around, it's hard to see their whole jersey number sometimes. So we're here third and seven. Two, Two backs. Everybody in tight. Fakes it. Throws. Yep. Tipped. Reception. First down. Number 11. Chirella on the reception. Wide Good open. Good run, too. Wide open. Room to run. First down. 221 left to go in the half. Over your 50-yard line. It was a good play call. It's one of those misdirection plays. Got everybody going one way. If you're going to play seven guy or everybody seven yards from the ball and you try to dump it in over, you have an opportunity like that. And it gets your speed guys out on the edge quickly. Getting the ball out there. Handoff inside again. Nothing going. Owen does that such a good job of holding on to that ball when everybody's tugging on him. Those are some big boys, too, tugging at that ball on that line by Vanguard. There's 51 on the tackle, Dijon McBride. And Dion's made his, his presence known pretty much from the beginning of the game. Yeah, he's plugging the holes up there, really limiting Springstead from doing what they like to do. Like you said, three, four yards at a time. Just keep the chains moving, run the clock, get in the end zone, play great defense. And we are getting reports the rain is here as it's, it's Centola 51. gets swallowed no, up. No, it's 50. Number 50, Mabuki Harris. That's a freshman. That's a freshman getting in on the varsity on an undefeated team. Making a big time sack. Yeah, big time sack for a loss there. We're under a minute. And under a minute, Vanguard's going to take a timeout here. 
The rain and is coming down hard. It is, it is legitimately raining here now at Springstead High School. So we're going to continue to play him this. Fortunately, halftime's just a couple of clicks <coughs> away. And we'll see what happens. If you've ever been in Florida, you know if you don't like the weather, just wait 10 minutes and, and see what it does then. So maybe this won't last long, or maybe this lasts the whole game. Ooh, number Let's four find from out the, together. From Vanguard seems to be excited about the rain. And tosses it out wide. Number three oh. is taken down by number seven. Isaiah Guy again. That's cross that slick on the run. On that run. And he did what he what he always does. He finishes the run hard. But number seven is is a pretty strong wall. Yeah. He delivered that blow that time. Hopefully he's okay because he's still down on the sideline. 89 for the senior defensive back. Well, now we got a monsoon out there. Yeah, you can even see on the screen the, the rain. Just pummeling this field. 44 seconds to go. And not just rain, it's a, there's there's a little wind associated with it too here. So The good thing is it's to the, the punter's back here. The and he is able to get the punt see away. See if he can catch this. Oh, he can't. And Slippery ball. Springstead, Springstead able to got recover. It. 34 seconds to go. I think that was Hopkins back there to receive it. Unable to. Slips right out of his hands. And Springstead's going to get the ball here with 34 seconds left. In best field position they've had all day. Yeah, sometimes you just got to let that one go. Especially in these conditions. Yeah, probably uh, probably best not to not to try to field it. About and I'm sure the wind was playing some havoc with that ball too. He was able to get it up high. And this ball tries to toss it and it is fumbled and I'm not sure who has the ball but Vanguard does have the ball so quick turnovers back to back here Dave. The, this is the last four minutes of this half have been back and forth. 27 seconds left. And this is going to add certainly a dynamic we talked about earlier in the game, uh, broadcast rather. Um, you know, handle on the ball, footing anything of that nature so Springstead shows their prevent defense just trying to not get beat over the top they dropped and the ball it's mishandled uh, yeah that's three fumbles in three plays I think Vanguard's just gonna let that run us to the half I think that's probably a wise decision on their part <laughs> So make sure you do stick with us at halftime. We'll have our senior spotlight featuring Owen Andrus. Interviews, highlights, and insights. And we're going to hand things off to our broadcast engineer, Will Wilkie, to take you through all of our halftime content, including the senior spotlight and the Legacy Wealth Partners regional scoreboard. Take it away, Will. Thank you, Derek and Dave. Wonderful job on the first half call. We'll bring them back for the second half of the game as well. We're fighting the weather right now, so bear with us as our, a lot of our equipment is outside this evening. And it is monsoon time here in Florida. So please click that subscribe button so you never miss any of the wonderful content here on GCSN. Our team works hard to bring you the best coverage and commentary possible. Please send some likes our way for Derek, Dave, Brian, and Wild Bill to let them know that you appreciate their efforts 
I'm Will Wilkie, and I'll be bringing you all the wonderful halftime coverage here on the Gulf Coast Sports Network. Though we may have to make some adjustments based on the weather. But coming up on GCSN at the half, if weather permits, we'll have the Springstead Eagle Brigade Marching Band. We'll take you through one selection of their songs with the remainder of the show remain uh, will be uploaded after the game. So go ahead and check that out. We'll also have our senior spotlight featuring Owen Andres, fullback for Springstead. You don't want to miss that. And then finally, we'll wrap up our halftime coverage with the Legacy Wealth Partners Regional Scoreboard. All that coming up on GCSN at the half. But for now, we'll take a quick break. Try to stay dry, and we'll be back with all this wonderful halftime content right after this. I was fortunate enough to be able to work with Divinity on a custom skincare regimen the year leading up to my wedding. It included a series of in-office treatments, microneedling, PRP, hydrofacials, and an at-home skincare regimen. So I had no worries the day of my wedding. My skin was perfect. My name is Tom Roselli. I served in the U.S. Navy, 65 to 69. Through all the turmoil and stress battling with the VA, I've come to learn that certain organizations have their hands tied and can only proceed so far. Whereas Attorney Chris Chambers uh, has the experience and the ability to dig into the files and uh, get the results that got me my 100%. Tremendous job in helping veterans. So due to the current weather conditions, we will actually need to forego the Eagle Brigade halftime show. So we apologize for that, but we do have a, uh, a weather situation in the area. I don't think it will end up delaying the game. It looks like a small front that's just coming through right now. It should be over by the end of halftime. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to take you right to our senior spotlight featuring Springstead fullback Owen Andres. Yeah, he didn't start playing until he was in sixth grade. We were, uh, like I said, a little hesitant about him playing just because of the contact, but uh, he, he really wanted to play. Yeah, so he started at Challenger in sixth grade and played his entire sixth grade year, got on the field a couple times, figured out he liked kicking, which came naturally after playing soccer. Seventh grade had a really good season, was receiving the ball, and then his eighth grade year really took to it, and that's when we really saw him like loving being on the football field. So that was a really, that was a fun time. I started playing football in sixth grade. Um, I always wanted to play football for a long time, but sixth grade was when my parents first let me. They said, you can play in sixth grade. And uh, so I did, I played at Challenger Middle School and I had a really good time. I realized I really liked it. And I realized I was pretty good at it, football too. So I had a fun time. That was the first time, like my first touchdown ever. That was a fun, that was a fun moment. Just seeing him grow from sixth grade to eighth grade was a really fun time for us as parents. And I know Owen really, that's when he fell in love with football. He did, that, that was a fun time. It was an opp opportunity for him to really, really shine. And, and he really ran with it. I mean, he, every single game he was going 150% when he was playing football. And that's how he's always played, everything he's done. Sixth grade, I was playing against some bigger kids and I did get some playing time on varsity a little bit, but seventh grade, I started on varsity. That's when I first started, I played wide receiver. Um, I had a lot of fun there too, playing wide receiver. And then eighth grade, I moved to running back. And that's when I really, like, that's when I really took a big growth and I started shining and doing really good. They went against Powell when he was eighth grade and um, he scored five touchdowns that game. And I remember he ran a touchdown back had a heck of a game. I think he might have had a touchback there, or pretty darn close to a touchback when he was in eighth grade. So he's been kicking it pretty good for a while. You know, all of eighth grade for me kind of is a blur. It felt like he was always on the field, and no matter what, he was going so hard. 
he would leave those games completely wasted and completely exhausted and feeling so excited and good. But I think the, the biggest thing for me was seeing his leadership on the field. Like he was always cheering the kids on, getting everybody back on the field. He was hustling in between the plays. His work ethic during that time, I feel like that was a transition with him as an athlete too, that he saw, if I work really, really, really hard, I can stand above, I can rise above. So going from eighth grade to high school was a big jump. Um, I went to school in Tampa. I was moved to a lot of different positions. Coaches moved me around everywhere. I wasn't really stuck in one spot. I played fullback. I played a little bit of running back uh, for a freshman and JV team. So yeah, that was a big jump from scoring 18 touchdowns in one year to scoring just not getting really getting the ball at all. We kind of made a decision to send Owen down to Tampa Jesuit, uh, and that's about a 45-minute one-way ride. Um, and Jen would take him down there uh, every day, and I would pick him up every day. And he was playing football and baseball. One thing that we found is I think Owen's heart was still back here in Spring, in Spring Hill. His heart was here in Hernando County, and he knew that. And he said he wanted the high school experience close to home. I, I wish we'd have had him for four years, but he's only been in our program for two. I think he was at Jesuit maybe his first and, you know, his freshman, sophomore year. Um, but to see him progress from last year to this year has been amazing transformation. He's such a good athlete uh, playing, you know, he's a baseball player, a very good baseball player, um, and he's a very good soccer player as well and a very good football player. And, that, you know, not having guys in specialized sport, um, if he'd been in the football program four years, I, I don't know, I can only imagine how much better he'd even be. Like, he's a very good player right now. And uh, I don't think we've even seen him peak yet. Like, the, the ceiling's still really high for him. He did make the choice to just play baseball his sophomore year. But then coming back to Springstead, Coach Teitelman approached him during the first week of school and asked him, why don't you come out for football? He's like, I don't want, no, I, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to go through that. He had gotten hurt a couple times at Jesuit. He didn't want to go through that again. So after about a week, Coach Teitelman finally said to him, I just don't want you to regret anything. That was the, what triggered it with Owen. He said, you know, I don't want regrets, so I am going to play. Owen knew coming into senior year he was going to gain that role back that he had in eighth grade. So we've seen that eighth grade kid come back for that senior year. And boy, has that been fun. It's been a great ride. And after my freshman year, I got hurt, and I realized that I don't want to get hurt no more. I didn't really like getting hurt. I didn't like sitting on the bench and just watching. I wanted to play. And I realized that I might get hurt again playing football, so stuck with baseball in my sophomore year. But then once I came back to Springstead, I realized I wanted to play football again. I was persuaded to do it. So it was a good decision, though, a good, good persuasion by a coach and uh, having a great time. I had a great time junior year. didn't play a lot, but I was kicking. I got in a couple times on defense. But then now senior year, it's going to be my, like, it's my turn to shine. I'm going to be in the backfield, getting the ball more, and just really want to win. We really want to win districts this year. We're going to have a good chance. Um, so that's our, that's our team goal right now, win districts, and then see what's, see what's going on from there. 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, he was playing every sport. We would get done with uh, uh, one sport and go out to another one. And, and that was a familiar feeling for him. And that's what we started to do again when he was in high school, which was pretty fun. It kind of brought back memories of, of him just every single day he had something, every day. And uh, that, 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 it's always fun to see him happy but exhausted. You know, that's a, that's a really good feeling. And I think it's a, a good foundation for you to set when you, when you start to get older and become adult. So, you know, he's not glued on a computer screen eight, ten hours a day. He, he's, he's been very active, and I think that'll be something that uh, uh, he'll move forward with and have uh, some pretty good experiences with that. Yeah, I mean, we love Owen playing three sports. He's a very gifted athlete, and, and he's not just an average player at those sports. He's a, a very good player, if not great player, at all three of those sports. So I think baseball is his first love, and, and I think that's where he's leaning towards going for college. But he could play college football. He could, he could play college soccer as well. He's got – he's that skilled at it, you know. And, um, uh, and, and again, we – you know, we want guys to play other sports and not specialize. It's going to help him in general in all of his sports. Football is going to help his soccer game. Soccer is going to help his baseball and, uh, and so forth and so on. You know, our football lifting, uh, it's helped him get stronger. It's going to help his leg get stronger for soccer. And, his, you know, his bat's going to be even stronger for, for baseball. So 
hopefully we, you know, we'll see the fruits of that labor in the spring. So I've always been a multi-sport athlete. I've played baseball, soccer, football pretty much since sixth, sixth grade. That's when I played all three. And um, that's really helped me a lot in every single sport. Soccer has helped me with my speed and kicking for football. Um, that really helped me a lot. That That's why I wanted to kick in football. I started with soccer. And I realized I was pretty good at kicking for football. So soccer helped me with that. And then for uh, just overall speed and endurance, soccer's really helped me with baseball and football. So, yeah. Uh, he is very, very excited for his senior year at high school. Uh, and, and I think that's always a special time. He's ready to get after it. I, I think he's, he's excited for the last couple of games of football. But I know he's ready to he's ready to get going with uh, the uh, baseball. And seeing him grow from last year and just come into Springstead on fire and ready to take this team as far as they could. Now knowing that he's so excited for senior year and this football season has been so much fun. I think he's going to take that momentum into baseball and then from there into college. And it's been an honor as a mom to watch him grow. The Springstead football staff has really taken me under their wing once I got here. They really made me feel like a home and really uh, given me a chance, which I really am grateful for that. Uh, specifically, Coach Tuttleman, he really persuaded me to play football again. He really wanted me to play football. And I was really reluctant in the beginning because I, I was scared of injury because of what happened in the past. But he really wanted me to play again, and I'm glad he, he was out there trying to get me to play. And also Coach Garofano, uh, he's a great head coach. Um, and he's really done a lot for the team and for me, and I really enjoy playing for him. So Owen not only is competitive on the sports field, but in the classroom. He, um, and he's pro been proven successful. He works really hard. He wants his scores to be the highest possible, and it's paid off. He, he's a hardworking kid. I've always been interested in math and business, and um, those are two of the things I really want to focus on when I get to college. Those are the things I want to major in. Um, something to do with math, that's my best subject in school. I've always done really good in it, and I've always liked it for some reason. I don't know, I don't understand why people don't like math. I've always done really good in it, and I've always liked it. So uh, after that, after college, I want to get into some career with uh, math, um, mostly finance, I think. That's somewhere where I want to be in finance. That's where I, that's where I want to go after college. Because this has been real fun to, to watch. I mean going out when he was little and watching all the practices and now I don't go to the practices like we used to <laughs> that was a good social time for 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 the friends of mine and they all know who who I'm talking about uh, but uh, uh, now it's just getting to watch his games and that's been a lot of fun but the, the, the future is going to be pretty bright for him. Owen's senior season here playing football at Springstead has been a really good opportunity for us to be a part of the Eagle family. So when I received my offer to play baseball in college that lit up my face like instantly because I know I've, I was waiting for a long time to get that get that sentence from a coach. Um, I've always wanted to go play in college and hearing that finally that kind of lifted that weight off my shoulders a little bit of trying hard and my parents really helped me with that. Um, they really helped me get get an offer like driving me to so many colleges and taking me to camps and all these baseball games and stuff and I wouldn't be here without them. I really want to thank my mom and dad. They've always been there for me. My mom, my biggest supporter all the time. She's always at my games. She really is upset when she misses one of my games. Um, and my dad, best coach I ever had, um, he really made me who I am today. Um, I'm really proud to have him as my dad. And that was the senior spotlight featuring Springstead fullback Owen Andres. Uh, due to the weather in the area, there is no halftime show. So we're going to take things over to the Legacy Wealth Partners Regional Scoreboard to close out the remainder of our halftime coverage. Just a reminder, the senior spotlight you can find on our YouTube channel under the GCSN Special Events. We feature a, a selected senior by the coaching staff for each home game that we cover 
a lot of interesting content, and these are wonderful kids, so please feel free to check that out on our YouTube channel. As well as any other previous game that we've broadcasted, it's up there and ready for you to view. So go ahead, click subscribe, and enjoy all the wonderful content that we have for youth sports here in Florida. For now, we're going to take things over to the Legacy Wealth Partners Regional Scoreboard, and we'll see you back again for the second half. And that concludes our coverage here at the Gulf Coast Sports Network Halftime Show. Again, we apologize that the weather did not cooperate with us this evening to bring you the Eagle Brigade Marching Band. Uh, they do put on a wonderful show, so if you're able to find any of their footage on YouTube, go ahead and give them a look. They put in a lot of effort and do a great job. But again, we hope you enjoyed the Senior Spotlight this evening and also checking in on the regional scores with the Legacy Wealth Partners scoreboard. But for now, we're getting ready for the kickoff of the third quarter, and we're going to send it back to the booth for Derek and Dave. I'm Will Wilkie. Thank you for joining us for GCSN at the half. Derek? Yeah, I was disappointed we couldn't see the uh, marching band. That's one of my favorite parts of high school and college football is, is the marching band. I know how much work they put in. Um, I don't live too far from this particular school, and... I can tell you, they were out there pretty much every day at putting dark, in the work. At night, yeah. So, um, And it you pays know. off. I mean, we were here last time. We saw them. They were fantastic. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. They put in just as much work as anyone else, and they're de devoted to their craft. It's a shame we didn't get to see them, but, you know, weather is whatever it is. So Yeah, yeah that's right. You know, you get the, the pads on, on some of the instruments. They get wet. 
just it's it, it goes haywire and there's not much you can do but we got the second half coming up 16 nothing is the score and Springstead's gonna get the ball to start the second half they did defer after they won the toss so they will get the ball back and we'll see what kind of field position they have and if they were able to put some extra plays in maybe emphasize some other plays that that were working for them uh, see what kind of adjustments they made we did get quite a rainstorm if you'll remember at the end of the, the first half so that has pretty much moved past us we may get some other rain throughout the game but I don't think it'll be nearly as intense as that band that pushed through <laughs> there was some serious wind and rain we had what three fumbles back to back to back, back. To back, to back yeah. and you know wisely just decided to call it a half and let the clock run out so what are your thoughts Dave going into the second half here 16 nothing it's still a ball game yeah and I see Vanguard over there they're they're working on their snaps their shotgun their quarterbacks you know checking out the field for his footing they're throwing the ball to receivers they're they're trying to get them right for the second half with the field conditions uh, I, I'm looking to see how that will play into the game. I know Crosslick went out on an injury right before halftime. I want to know if he's coming back, if if he's not, who is, and just how are they going to respond to being down 16 points to a very good defense who has not let a whole lot of points, 40 points scored on the young season on on the on the long season, you know. So it looks like we have. They're probably going to make him kick it. They're probably going to try not to kick it into the end zone. Oh, he, you know, 17 has shown us time and time again he can get it there. But I'm guessing he's going to want them to field it, catch it, run in the dirt, and then hold on to it. Hold so on to it. And they got some big boys running down, too. We've seen some hard hits already. So we have number one and number 11 back deep. Luca Gargillo and Derek Chirilla. Yeah. And nice high kickoff. Oh, and Doug, uh, it's going to stop at about the four yard line. Picked up by Gargillo and met at about the 10 yard line there. So they'll get the ball at the 10 yard line. Kick by Wilcox. Really good one. Able to stop it between the five and the goal line. And with the wet field conditions, that ball had no chance to bounce and just kind of died right there. Yeah, and, and, and you saw him. He, he, he caught the ball, picked it up, ran with it, but he could not change directions. Uh, you know, if you've ever tried to run really fast in, in a muddy, slippery surface. Uh, yeah, you can change your cleats all you want, but you, it's not going to do skating, much. Yeah, you're that's right. Out there. That's right. So, Springstead to start the second half. Going to start from the 10 yard line. Two receivers to the left. One back set and hands it off, and it looks like that's going to be a loss of a couple on that play. Looks like that was Andrus on the carry. We hope you enjoyed our senior spotlight featuring Owen Andrus. I know I enjoyed it. Love watching that guy, watching him play. Uh, it is a good, it's always, I love the most about the sport, the, 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 the athlete, the spotlight, is you get a, di a, a deeper look into why they play, when they started, who they are. It's a fantastic segment. I love it. Well, we hope you love it at home as much as we do. And they do stand alone. It's that inside handoff. Quickly, quickly squashed by, it looks like, number 50 and 51, which is not a surprise. Those two by Vanguard have done a great job of sealing up the middle of the field right where Springstead likes to run it. That's number 50, Harris, and number 51, McBride. Uh, Harris, a freshman, McBride, a junior. And throw is caught there across the middle, kind of an underneath route. 
It looked like and someone's helmet just flew yeah, about that, 15 yards in the air. And that reception to number nine, Adrian Lacacus. It brings up fourth down, though, for the Eagles as the punt team comes on. Probably going to try and keep it away from number seven, Isaiah Guy, back there. We've said his name a few times yeah, he's, tonight. He's the ATH, the athlete. And that's how they have him lifted, and they are not wrong about that. Another end-over-end -end punt, making sure he has no chance to receive it when out of bounds it. And maybe the 35. Let's see where referee stops. Can be closer to the 30, maybe. No, he's just going to keep walking here, and it's going to be about a... 12 yard punt all said and done so Vanguard going to get the ball with very good field position here and, and it all came off the, the original kickoff you know pinning them deep and, and they believe in their defense which they should and and that's why Springstead is, is where they are right now because of that awesome kick and, and Vanguard's got a great starting spot here to start the second half. Number 12, Gilcrest behind center. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. One back, hands off across the front. Number five on the carry, taken out of bounds. Number six on the carry, sorry, Joshua Rembert. Kind of came over from that slot receiver position to get the toss from Gilcrest. Yeah, pretty fast fella, number six. So, one back, Betterson, behind Gilcrest, two receivers to his left, one to his right. Both safeties back for Springstead. Screen pass number three and slipping and sliding all over the field, but able to get a couple of yards there. Tyrell Randall on the reception. Well, Tyrell, he also saw that it's it's tough to change directions on this on this turf right now. Might have been better off just to take the sideline and. Just put your head down, go north and south. Yeah, cutting's not going to work for anybody. Again, one back, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Behind Gilcrest is Batterson. And here's a blitz picked up. Batterson on the run. He gets into the end zone for a touchdown. <laughs> So it's another six on the board. 22 here for Vanguard. Yeah, Betterson, he, 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 I don't even know if he was touched on that play. Uh, but, you know, number 12, he did a nice job walking up to the line, changing the play, moving people around. It looked like he changed the whole thing at the line himself. Really? Yeah, Gilcrest happens to be the holder there as well as the quarterback you were talking about is that kick being through by Wilcox, kicker for Vanguard, who's done a really good job for them, you know, notwithstanding the missed field goal, which had plenty of leg, extra point, I mean, just kind of hooked it, but able to pin that kickoff between the five and the goal line. Uh, kicked a 35 field goal from the 35 for three and he, He's got a good leg and he's he's quite skilled with it So back deep again number one Gargillo and number 11 Torella See if Wilcox can Chip one Again, have it drop where he wants. Twenty-three nothing, eight forty-five left in the third. 
and this one's pooched here and it's dove on wisely. Yeah, that's his heads up play to get on that Looks live like, ball. Uh, maybe 88 out there. It's on the far side of the field. 84, my apologies, Dalton Williams. Freshman wisely just smothers that ball up. So Springsteen will get the ball from their 35. There's definitely a lot of football to be played, but they need to respond now. This is the time. Cash in on some first downs. Move the ball. Let's get in the end zone if you're you're an eagle. Pass is complete to Gargillo on the far sideline. And depending on the spot, might have enough for a first down. It, I love that both teams are not afraid to run and throw in this in this in this weather. Uh, and it's great. That was a great pass, great catch. Both teams are, are going to the air still here in the second half. So that completion good for a first down. Ball now moved to the 45 yard line. Quarterback Eber. Yep, keeps it, almost got the edge, but gets a couple Centola on the keeper. It looked like a read option there, Dave. There was Markel Davis on the tackle for Vanguard. Two wide receivers to the right playing from the looks like middle of the field right now. Rolls out right, tries to cut back, slips, falls about the 38 yard line. So that's a loss of about seven, six, seven yards there. Yeah, lost his footing. Uh, Vanguard, they they cover so well. I mean, I know they're they're so close to the ball, but they have so much speed in their secondary. They were, the wide receivers were covered. Quarterback going through his progressions, slips, falls. Looked like he was trying to to plant his foot to to make a throw, and as close as the Vanguard pursuit was, once he lost his footing, it was pretty much over. Now you're in a tough spot. Third and long. Third and quite long here. About 16. So two wide receivers high, one back. Andrus behind, steps back, goes to run, pulls it down, and gets a couple, not the 15 or 16 he needed. And that'll bring up fourth down. That was number 40 for Vanguard on the tackle. Shaden Brown, the junior, junior linebacker. linebacker. Yeah. Punt team out for Springstead. We have a different return for Vanguard. That might be the running back, number 22. Nope. 26, and he's not going to have an opportunity to get it. Is that one hit out of bounds again, but with a little bit more net yardage, I think, this time. It, that was... That's Tay one Leslie Farmer on the uh, potential return. Uh, we've seen him targeted a couple of times by Gilcrest, especially, and with the ball in his hands, he's he's pretty quick, pretty shifty. Um, but you got to have north and south speed here under these conditions, Dave. So we're gonna take a quick break here. We'll be right back after this. Certainly, I'm an avid golfer. Been you know golf usually weekly. 
play a lot with uh, my wife. With the repetitive motion, as you know, with a lot of golfers, it's an unnatural motion that you put your body through. After suffering for years with shoulder pain, Mike chose stem cell therapy as an alternative to surgery. I'm just excited because patients that have been pain for years that are now doing the things that they want to do, and Mike's just going to be adding to that list. Call Aligned Integrative Medicine for exam and x-rays to see if you qualify for stem cell treatment. Welcome back, sports fans. First and 10 here for the Vanguard Knights. Thank you for joining us. 6.09 left in the third quarter. A quarterback keeper, Gilcrest, able to get about six yards, bring up second and four. Now, Vanguard's been going back and forth between their two quarterbacks. They have two really awesome quarterbacks. A junior, or I'm sorry, a sophomore in Gaskin, and then the senior right now that we get to see right now, Gilcrest, who's doing a great job leading them as of late. Yeah, they haven't missed anything when they put Gilcrest in. They're both very talented, and running back slips and falls trying to hit the hole. Looked like that was number 22, Javarion Salter. Unfortunately, he rolled up on his old lineman's ankles. Gladly, he's okay. Yeah, everybody's still standing. Uh, that can be tough. Checking the sidelines for the play. One receiver to the right. Two to the left. One back, Salter, next to Gilcrest. Third down, about five. And Springstead brings the blitz. Gilcrest out of the pocket, and he's going to get enough for the first down. And finally met about three yards past that first down marker. So he's a tall kid. Uh, comes in, checks in at 6'3", 190. But he can move pretty good, though. Uh, Found some daylight, saw an opportunity for a first down, and took it. And that daylight wasn't straight. It was to the right, to the left, back to the right, back to the left, you know. Uh, that was just a basic screen and uh, decided to pull it down. Hands off to Salter. Find some room to the left side, tripped up after a game of about four. We have 42, Jordan Novotsky on the tackle. Uh, bring up second down and looks to be about five. Gilcrest directing traffic out there. Hands off again to Salter. And he's met in the backfield. That's number 18 again for the Eagles tonight. Number 18, Tucker Watson. He's the guy who had the fumble right before half. He's he's been playing a really strong game today. Tucker Watson on the top for the Eagles. So three three receivers to the left, one to the right, one back for Gilcrest. And we are at third down and about four. And checking the side, some confusion here on that Vanguard sideline, and they're just going to take a timeout. They can't get on the same page. So timeout here with 2.58 left. We're going to take a timeout as well. Stick with us, though. We'll be right back here on the Gulf Coast Sports Network. My name is Tom Roselli. I served in the U.S. Navy, 65 to 69. Through all the turmoil and stress battling with the VA, I've come to learn that certain organizations have their hands tied and can only proceed so far. Whereas Attorney Chris Chambers 
uh, has the experience and the ability to dig into the files and uh, get the results that got me my 100%. Tremendous job in helping veterans. Welcome back sports fans, third down and five here for Vanguard, trying to keep this play going, this drive going I should say. A lot of early movement by the Eagles on defense. And here they come, they get him, Gilcrest thrown down, and it looks like number 55 was a That's Curtis lead on Johnson. that. He, he was in there. And he's bumped. He's excited. Yeah, he feels good about that, as they should. Brings up fourth down. Loss of about one or two on that. We're going to see a punt by the Vanguard. Yeah, looks like the punt team is coming out. Well, some of them. They need 11. I think they got six. So half Eight. of the punt team is out. <laughs> they might need another timeout. Two twelve left in the third. Twenty-three nothing. And it looks like that's gonna be close enough for them. Oh, we got a couple more coming out and looks delay like a delay game, a game yeah. here. Pushing back a little bit more now that they've got their personnel sorted out. Not interested in burning a, another timeout. Figure it out. They'll just push themselves back another few yards. Looks like we have 21. Oh, they blocked it. They blocked the punt. They scooped it. And finally brought down number 20. Recovered Nine. 42 on the That's recovery. That's Mexki, opportunistic defensive specialist. It's exactly the kind of thing the Eagles needed here. To get back in this ball game. Now they got a chance on offense, really deep in Vanguard territory. Yeah. Vanguard, you know, they're up 23. They had a little, they had to burn a timeout because they weren't on the right page on offense. Then they don't have enough people on, on punt team. They can't check out, or Springstead will take advantage. Let's yeah, see they're if they take have advantage to stay in here. This game. So two backs behind Centola. Defense and moved a little early. Flag on the play. That'll get them an extra five yards when they get first and five. They just keep marching towards that Vanguard goal line. That was 51 McBride jumping off sides. And the Springstead crowd, after they've gotten themselves dried off here, are making themselves known. Uh, they kind of feel the the need to punch one in the end zone here and start making this a ball game. And Ooh. pulled back by Santola. Nope, nope. Santola, touchdown. Touchdown, Santola. Nobody knew he had the ball. Put it in Anderson's belly, pulled it back, and went right up the middle with it. Springstead on the board here. With a quick six after some miscues wow. by Vanguard. But it looks like there's a flag on the play. And 
Vanguard is under the impression that touchdown is not going to stand. Well, Owen Andrus was suplexed on the play, but he didn't appear to have the ball because the ball was in the end zone. So as the referees sort this out, I see that Coach Garifano is out there at the hash making sure the white hat understands what's going on, but the screen set sideline is booing them. Yeah, they are letting their displeasure be known uh, at the presumed penalty. I wonder if it was an inadvertent whistle? There was some confusion on that play. It did seem odd. It was great misdirection, though, by, by Springstead and Centola. Seeing the opportunity, pulling it down. Everybody biting on the play. So I wonder where our sideline reporter is here. I don't think he's close enough to get us any, any feedback. He, on. He's definitely getting us inside the play right now just he had a good view I wish he could have told us so we need some good lip reading here yeah and as a result of the weather even if he did have some info I don't think he'd be able to to communicate with us anymore unfortunately but he is getting us great shots over there and Let's see what the final call ends up being. So it looks like it's a replay. It's a it's replay first of down. first down. First and five from the 15-yard line. So points off the board for Springstead. They're still in a great situation here. It's first and five inside the 20-yard line. One receiver up high, another one in the slot, one, re one back behind him running for his life, and he is going to be dragged down Number 50 about the 27-yard line. Number 50 again. The freshman again. Mabuki Harris. Mabuki Harris. He's, he's had at least twi two sacks. Two sacks for big losses, if memory serves right. That one especially. So from first and five to second and 15 here for the Eagles. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. So two backs, Gargillo and Andrus. Hands off to Andrus up the middle, and he is swallowed quickly. Number 51, McBride, and I have to imagine Harris was not far away. Their team, their duo. And that's the end of the third quarter. We're going to take a break. Stick with us for the fourth quarter here on the Gulf Coast Sports Network. Preparing for that next step in life isn't always easy. At Legacy Wealth Partners, our combination of experience, professionalism, and access to a wide variety of products and services to help meet all of your financial goals. For a new level of attention, insight, and capability, contact the trusted team at Legacy Wealth Partners. Welcome back, sports fans. The start of the fourth quarter here. Alongside Dave Barrett, I'm Derek Smith bringing you the call tonight. 23 nothings our score. Vanderbilt over Springstead. Uh, that last play uh, looks like Owen Andrus had to get some help getting off of the field, so... Well, and that plays a, an important part because he is their field goal kicker as well, and they are within his range. So 
So I've just been alerted that there is some more weather on the way, so we are going to have to pull our sideline camera. Uh, we will still have our main cam, and you'll still hear our sultry voices to lead you through <laughs> the last 12 minutes of this ball game. But we need to get Brian Lott out of the weather and make sure our equipment makes it through. Rolls right, pass complete to Torella. And he is brought down. And flag on the play. Then another another eagle down. And another eagle down. Looks like a 60. lineman here. 63. Okay. Grabbing his Aiden shoulder. Orta is down. And walking off the field. Looks like he's grabbing his arm. And it's a personal foul. Looks like... He, Pretty much driven straight into the ground there. Number seven, Isaiah Guy, the culprit. That's what it appears, Dave. That Connor Macasio checked in at fullback for uh, Mr. Andrus that last play. And he's out there again this play. Looks like they're going to move the chains with that penalty. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be enough to net a first down. So fresh set of downs here for Springstead from the 10-yard line is where it's going to be placed. So some miscues for Vanguard and Eagles trying to take advantage here. Now without their two leading rushers, Andrus and Lick, both out at the moment. Centola under center. Looks like Connor Macasio checked in as the sole back there. Two receivers to the left. And he will get the ball. Gets a couple of yards on first down, does Macasio. Until he's brought down by number 18 Carpenter. They can so, still get a first down and not score. It's just so close to the end zone. Yeah, the first down marker looks like about the two down there. And this will bring up second and eight. So you bring up a good point though. Andrus is also their field goal kicker as well as their fullback. And not sure who they have backing him up in that position, but we may end up seeing him out here try to get some points on the board as Springstead does take a timeout here. Try Number to get 55. the right play called. Chauncey, he is the backup kicker. We got to see him yes, in uh, yes. some kickoff I do remember duties. seeing him kick off a couple of times. So with that timeout, let's go ahead and check on the Legacy Wealth Partners regional scoreboard. Welcome back, sports fans. Second down and seven for the Eagles. End around. Hand off. Looks like he's yes. going to get into the end zone. That's Gargillo. No, not quite to the end zone, but maybe enough for a first down there. He right on the goal line. That was a nice misdirection play by the Eagles. Good run by Gargillo. Just putting his foot in the ground and making a beeline to the end zone. He, he did a great job because because Vanguard had that sniffed out and he put that left foot in the end zone or left foot planted and, and he didn't slide at all. Quarterback sneak. And not quite enough for a touchdown, but 
Maybe maybe got a half a yard on that. Well, they're not far from the from the, the end zone there. I think they're they're sniffing the chalk there. They are so close. They are so close to an end to to getting in the end zone, getting some points on the board here. Twenty three nothing. Nine thirty left in this ball game. Another another sneak. You think another QB sneak? Santola was unhappy. He was unable to get in the end zone after that last play. Oh, and he is swallowed up. Loss of about three or four yards on that one. Looked yeah, there's like, the miscommunication um, somewhere along the lines because he turned off to hand the ball to somebody and there somebody, was no one there. Somebody, they were not there. All that were there was a bevy of Vanguard Knights to meet him. Well, we don't have Cross. We don't have Owen. But yet the the Eagles are still down there inside the five yard line, ready to ready to do something. We got third and goal. Uh, one back. Two receivers thrown out that ball knocked out of the air a little tight end dump there yeah it looked like like number two emily sancho defensive back able to knock that ball down like the tended receiver hard to see maybe 86 yeah sancho has four interceptions on the season so, so knocking it down was 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 the best case scenario for the Eagles. Yeah, that's right. And we got fourth down. Fourth and goal. You, and you can't kick because your kicker's hurt. You want the points. You need the points at this point. Fakes the handoff, rolls right. Intercepted. Intercepted. <laughs> oh my. Number fifty-one. McBride, wouldn't you know, on the interception, try to screen, and McBride was able to read it, get in front of that pass. Got about 15 yards on the return. Knights will take over at about the 19-yard line. The D tackle getting the interception. And the return. Well, he was looking for a contact too. He was. He, he had was his head a down. Physical little fella, ready to he, go. He was. He was hoping somebody was going to try and hit him up high. All right, so the Eagles come up empty. That was probably their best opportunity to this ball game to this point, at least, and to come up empty-handed. Yeah. It's going to be tough. That's the Betterson. Yeah, that's Betterson. Takes it out wide. Makes a couple of people miss. Gets about 17, 20 yards on that run. And is able to move the chains. And gets it out to the 45-yard line. No, I apologize. About the 37-yard line. Make sure you stick with us right after the games. We'll announce our Glory Days Player of the Game selection. And we got some choices here, Dave, to go through as to who might get the Glory Days GCSN player of the game. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some strong defensive candidates, some strong offensive candidates. So Gilchrist still behind center, hands off, number five this time, has some daylight, and looks like he has stopped right before the end zone. Joshua Rembert. And he gets the ball again. Makes a move in the hole. Takes it outside. And he's got some speed. He's going to take it all the way to the house for another Vanguard touchdown. So the wide receiver makes a nice move 
once he gets past that first level, finds some daylight, turns on the Jets, nobody catches him. Yeah, that. so he had a receiving touchdown and just had a 40, 40 plus yard rushing touchdown. Nine set up for the point after attempt. So after this point after, the 30 to nothing Vanguard over Springstead. So Wilcox in to kick Gilcrest, the quarterback is the holder, and we're going to get another lineman in here. They want to make sure they don't, Springstead doesn't come in and put a hand on this one too, and they don't. Kick is up, and it is good. Is so good. 30 to nothing's your score, 723 left in the fourth the quarter, and we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after this. I was fortunate enough to be able to work with Divinity on a custom skincare regimen the year leading up to my wedding. It included a series of in-office treatments, microneedling, PRP, hydrofacials, and an at-home skincare regimen. So I had no worries the day of my wedding. My skin was perfect. Welcome back, sports fans. Alongside Dave Barrett, I'm Derek Smith. We hope you're enjoying the coverage here on Gulf Coast Sports Network. Be sure to stick with us after the game as we announce our Glory Days Player of the Game selection. The player of the Game gets not only a very fashionable and highly sought after GCSN t-shirt that lets everybody know you were the player of the game. They also do get a Glory Days gift certificate. It's redeemable at any Glory Days location. So this pooch kick is received. Number 84, Dalton Williams, the freshman, returns it and he's going to get the ball out to about the 35 yard line for the Eagles offense to take the field, see what they can do about getting rid of that goose egg on their side of the scoreboard. I, I see, well, here comes 51 again. So they still have some of their bigger players coming back out, trying to preserve that, that, uh, that zero. Yeah, a game like this is only gonna help that points per game average go down as if you didn't think that was possible you know opponent scoring what six six points a game on average against them you know you pitch a shutout and that's just going to go down here so two backs behind Centola he tries to take it himself up the middle No, I'm sorry. It was number thirty on the on the carry, Jackson Nichols, freshman, gets a couple of yards. It'll bring up second and seven. Six thirty left in the ball game. Santola behind center, two backs behind him. One receiver in close on the right. The handoff goes up the middle. Good for a couple of yards there. It was number forty in on the tackle. He's had a couple. That's uh, Shaden Brown, yeah. the junior linebacker. Thirty-four, Craig Corbett. The rusher on that brings up third and five from about the 42 yard line and officials are going to take a timeout here for a fourth quarter water break and while they're taking a timeout why don't we check out the legacy wealth partners regional scoreboard 
Welcome back, sports fans, alongside Dave Barrett. I'm Derek Smith, bringing you the call on this game. Springstead down 30 to nothing to the Vanguard Knights out of Ocala. And Centola, the offense, looking to make something happen here from the 43-yard line. Had two backs behind him. Everybody kind of bunched in close. That ball was handed off. That looked like the Number tackle was 35, Jaden Bryan, the sophomore linebacker. Yeah, Corbett again on that handoff. And it brings up fourth down. Looks like the offense is still on the field here. If they're going to make something happen, now is going to pretty much be the time. I like it. Five minutes to go in the game. Fourth and four. Let's give it a shot. Tosses it out oh. wide. Number one, Gargillo can't keep his footing and just falls right to the ground. Yeah, 32 forced them inside. When you force them inside, you, you force them to your buddies. And in could this get, weather, get the, the, corner the conditions and help. That's what it is. So Vanguard will take over on downs at the Eagle 40, 38 yard line. 5-12 left in the ball game. And swung out wide, number 88. And he's taken out of bounds. A little frustration there, number 14. Houston on the tackle, 88 on the reception. Jeremiah Ewing, freshman, <coughs> wide receiver, takes that for about a 15-yard gain. Be first down again. That ball's handed off inside, number 42. And he is driven backwards <coughs> by a gang of Eagles. That's Micah Sapp, sophomore. Checking in 5'10", 205. Listed as a linebacker, taking some snaps at fullback, though. Gilcrest still behind center. Two receivers to his right and left with Sapp behind him. Bunch of defensive backs out there for the Eagles. It looks right, and he is instantly brought down number 42 on that sack Jordan Novopsky Novometsky Novometsky all right yeah he was he was a former player of the game I believe he's always in on all these tackles blasted through that gap and Gilcrest went to look right he had nowhere to go except the ground Jordan was right there Gilchrist also, does a great job communicating with his wide receivers, talking to his offensive alignment, switching his back from one side to the next. Steps back, looks around, under pursuit, able to shovel it out in front. 88 the, stays on his feet, and he's able to get into the end zone. The freshman again, twice on this drive. Yeah, Jeremiah Ewing. Freshman getting into the end zone there. Great balance. Great balance. Way yeah. to stay inbounds, 
keep your knee off the ground, and then the acceleration to get into the end zone I once you see regain a your balance. Penalty flag on the ground. Penalty flag over there. Yeah, pretty much right at the uh, line of scrimmage, and it looks like it'll go against Vanguard. So to take those points back off the board. And the rain has started again, Dave. As Coming down promised. A pretty, pretty good little clip here. So it's going to add an interesting dynamic. I don't think we will have the rain or the the size rain we had or the amount of wind as we closed out the first half with quite quite a, a band of storms coming through. Now Gilchrist did do a pretty good job of keeping that ball alive, He's keeping his eyes downfield, tossing it to 88. We have seen him be able to scramble with some success too. So this will bring up third and maybe 20. Gilchrist steps back, looks for somewhere to go, shakes off a tackler, tries to get to the edge. He does get there, but he is not going to get enough for a first down. Decent run, though, under the circumstances. Able to get some positive yards. It looks like the uh, kicking team is going to come out, try to get three on the board. 324 left in the ball game. 30 nothing is the score here. Vanderbilt Knights, Vanguard Knights, my apologies, over the Springstead Eagles. And there's some real raindrops falling now. Well, that affects the snap, the hold, and the kick. That's right. And difficult hold, wow. but he is able to get it through. That was that snap barely got to him. Mm -hmm. Gilchrist good. grabbed it, set it up in the, the last second there for a good kick by number 17. Yeah, Wilcox able to to still with all that happening in front of him get it through the uprights. So 3:20 left here, and we'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. What's better is on your team? D-Rip. For the past five years, I haven't ran uh, because I just believed that my body was on the decline, that the pain that I was experiencing uh, was not uh, tolerable enough for me to go out and run. And it's one of the main reasons why I retired from the NFL, wanting to be able to run and play with my kids. And the day that he adjusted me, I felt that relief. Picked up. Yeah, it's picked up a little bit, hasn't it? It's an interesting team. Welcome back, sports fans. So, just got to know, we <laughs> did get some water on some of our equipment. We are unable to keep up the scoreboard for you, but we'll do our best from here to let you know what's going on. Is that, that kick was not struck as well as I would imagine uh, Wilcox would have liked to, but... Yeah, he, his plant foot slipped. You know, with with the rain that's picking up, but but as you did say, our scoreboard is 33 to zero because that field goal was good. And we got 3:17 left in this ball game, and fans that have stayed are starting to second guess that decision as more and more people are making their way out. So Springstead's going to get the ball here at about their 18-yard line. One back, two receivers to the left. There you go. Hands it off on the inside. Number 11 on the carry. Chirilla, wide receiver. Chirilla's done a nice job for us tonight, trying to get it, you know, some positive yards. Nothing you get off Vanguard is going to be easy. And you know he's he's really laid his laid his heart out there tonight. Yeah, he's <laughs> we've seen him a couple of times, and there's a reason he's one of their kick returners, pump returners, and they're trying to get the ball in that young man's hands. So th th that'll bring up second down and seven. Santola behind center and hands it off inside again. 
goes through the line of scrimmage for a short game. Brings up third down. Ball is coming up to the 55 yard line, bringing it third and five. Brings up third down and five to go. 203 left in the game. Make sure you stick with us after the game as we'll announce our Glory Days Player of the Game selection. Uh, not only do they get the uh, GCSN Glory Days Player of the Game t-shirt, which everybody wants, but they also get a gift certificate to be used at the Glory Days restaurant. So we appreciate their support. There we go. This there run goes. bounced outside, but oh. ball is stripped as he passes passes by a, a vanguard I can't see I can't yeah, see right numbers at, at, at this point yard right line. about the 35 five yard line ball gets stripped vanguard able to recover it so they will get the ball back in really good field position again with two minutes left a minute 30 left in the ball game Looks like they're getting some of their younger players in. Looks like we got a new quarterback. Looks like we do have a new quarterback. And slips out of his hands and the shotgun wisely just falls on top of it. 82. 82 checking in quarterback. Freshman Broutwell Brooks. Seeing some time here in this ball game. And it looks like 42 is the running back. Oh, 80 is a running back. He's going to get the ball. It's a nice run up Still the middle. Still on his feet, too. He's finally taken out of bounds with authority. Hosiah Farmer, another freshman athlete. Out there. Forty seconds to go. Third down and five. Thirty-three nothing is the score. Thirty seconds left in this ball game. Third down. <coughs> Swings it out wide. Makes one tackler miss, but not the second. That was received number 26, Leslie Farmer. And not able to do much once he gets it, though. And for fourth down, they're going to stick on the field, see if they can get these chains moved one more time. They cannot. Really good tackle there. Number 80 was a ball carrier. And tackled number 55. I believe that is Curtis Chancy again. On the inside there. Good tackle. We got a second and a half left. Turnover on down. So second and a half left in this ball game. 33 nothing. Your score is enough time for one play for the Eagles as they will have first down on their own 30 yard line. And it looks like we're trying to decide what we're gonna do here with the last remaining moments in this ball game. And that's the ball game folks. So for our glory days player of the game, I'll hand it over to Dave Barrett. Yes, thanks Derek. Hey, now it's time for the Glory Days Player of the Game, sponsored by Glory Days on Cortez in Brooksville, Florida, where you can always eat like a champion. And tonight, our Player of the Game is D. Witt Betterson, the running back, the senior running back for Vanguard. He had two touchdowns, several yards, and played well all day. Yeah, he really did. He had a nice game for them out of the backfield, even after they switched quarterbacks. Uh, he stayed in and really, really was a, a big factor in this big win for Vanguard. 
So for Dave Barrett, I'm Derek Smith. We'll send it over to Will Wilkie and take you out of here. We appreciate you joining us here on Gulf Coast Sports Network. Thank you, Derek and Dave, on the call this evening. Your final score, Vanguard 33, Springstead nothing. We hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. Please go ahead, throw some likes our way, click subscribe. And as always on the Gulf Coast Sports Network, we'll see you next time.